Today, we're starting a brand new series of videos on custom lighting models. Let's go. Let's start out by talking about what a custom lighting model is. Usually, when we make a shader, we create base color, normal, metallic, ambient occlusion, and smoothness. And these are the standard material inputs for a lit shader. But these properties aren't lighting. We're not calculating anything related to lighting here. We're calculating the surface properties of the material. And then the lighting is calculated afterward. So things like what the specular highlight looks like, how the reflections and ambient lighting work, whether or not we're using screen space ambient occlusion or some form of global illumination, the engine is doing that part under the hood and we don't have any control over it when we use a lit shader like this. We only control the surface properties of the material. But in this series, I'm gonna show you how to go beyond just the simple surface properties and actually control how lighting gets calculated in your project. But let's talk about why for just a minute. Why would you wanna do all of the work required to set up your own custom lighting model when the engine is doing a perfectly fine job of calculating lighting already? <laughs> well, great question. I'm glad you asked. There are several reasons, and hopefully one or more of these will help you get interested in what I'm gonna show in this series. The first reason is performance. Game engines usually try to calculate lighting in the most realistic way possible. The engine's goal is to make your models and environments look great. So the lighting model they use is usually a really nice form of physically based lighting. This works really well for games that are trying to be as realistic as possible and run on high-end PCs and the latest console. But if you're making a game for low-end mobile devices or less capable PCs, you might want to make your own lighting model so that you can make it a lot cheaper to calculate. You could leave out some of the more complex calculations and simplify things. That way, your game can run faster on less capable hardware, but it also means you'll have a much larger potential audience. The second reason is stylization. You might have a very specific art style in mind for your game. Now, it is possible to achieve a unique art style using just the models and textures you create without changing the engine's lighting model. But if you want to really customize the look of your game, you're going to want to create a custom lighting model as well. A lot of popular games do this, creating a unique look that makes them stand out. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom are a good example of this. Finally, you might want to create a custom lighting model because you want light to behave differently than it normally would. What if your world is black and white and you want your light sources to add color to the world? Or what if your world is a blank canvas that gets filled in as the player moves through it? These are some good examples of customization and they're similar to stylization, but they involve making light behave in a unique way. So performance, stylization, and customization are three good reasons to make your own lighting model. There may be others, but hopefully this is enough to get you thinking about what you might want to do if you knew how to create a custom lighting model. If we take a look at our sample scene here. This sphere over here on the left is using the engine's standard physically based lighting mode. It's using the shader that I showed you a minute ago that's just passing base color, normal, smoothness, and ambient occlusion into the lit master stack. This next sphere here is using a custom PBR lighting model that I made to imitate the engine's, the engine's lighting, but it's doing it in shader graph instead of under the hood. 
The third sphere is using a custom lighting model that's a lot cheaper to calculate and runs significantly faster than the first two, but it also lacks some of the more realistic features. And finally, over on the right, I've got a tune shaded lighting model that looks very different from the others. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to make all of these things and a lot more in the coming weeks. So let's take a minute to talk about light and how we deal with it in computer graphics. Light comes from two types of sources, direct light sources, where light is shining directly on the surface from the source in a single direction and indirect sources where light is bouncing around the environment and coming in from all directions before hitting the surface. After light hits the surface, there are two types of surface interactions we're going to discuss. Specular light leaves the surface in one main focus direction, while diffuse light is scattered and leaves the surface in all directions. There are more outgoing light behaviors, but we're going to concentrate on these two most common types today. If we combine the incoming and outgoing light behaviors, we end up with four main light surface interactions. Direct diffuse is light coming directly from the source and getting scattered in all directions. Direct specular is light coming directly from the source and being reflected in a focused direction. Indirect diffuse is light coming from the ambient environment and getting scattered by the surface. And indirect specular is ambient light coming from the environment and being reflected in a focused direction. These four distinctions don't really exist in reality, but in computer graphics, it's convenient to break things down this way so we can develop methods for handling each of these cases. Let's take a look at some example images. This is what direct diffuse looks like. It's the most simple type of light that the engine calculates. Notice that the lighting is very broad across the surface and that there are areas facing away from the direct light source that, that aren't lit at all. Here's an example of direct specular. While it's slightly more expensive to compute than diffuse, comparatively speaking, it's also very cheap. Notice that the lighting is very tightly focused. It's basically a reflection of the light source shining on the surface. Next is indirect diffuse. It's the most complex to calculate because it's modeling the behavior of billions of light rays bouncing around the scene. Because of the expense required, this type of light is often rendered offline and stored in light maps or light probes. This process can take many hours in complex scenes. Finally, we have indirect specular. Some people just call this reflections. It's also fairly complex to create this effect. Most game engines provide several different ways to create this effect, like reflection probes, planar reflections, screen space ray tracing. And the most accurate method for creating these reflections is with real ray tracing, but it's also the most expensive and wasn't even possible to do in real time until just recently. So these light surface interactions are combined to create the final image. Here we can see the effects of all four of these light types on our teapot. So a standard PBR lighting model in your game engine uses all four of these light types. If you were to make a cheaper version of that lighting model, you might use each of them, but calculate them in a cheaper way. And if you're going for stylization, you might do something completely different. In future videos in this series, I'm going to show you how to do all of these things and more. So subscribe to the channel if you're not already and come back next week 
ready to jump right in and create custom lighting. We'll see you next week, everybody.